Hi guys, welcome to the sixth video in the Chemical Monitoring and Management series for HSC Chemistry. Uh, this video is going to be slightly different to some of the others that um, I've put together for you guys um, because I really based this more around one of the questions um, that's kind of a, an extended response question on the significance of the Haber process. In the last couple of videos, we've looked at the Haber process uh, as both an example of a system in equilibrium, an industrial process that requires high yields, and therefore one that needs to be monitored in order to ensure that the conditions associated with its production are uh, at their optimum to maximise those yields. Uh, but probably one of the other things that I haven't touched on yet is the significance of the Harbour process and why it was picked not just as an example of an equilibrium. In fact, the important thing about the Harbour process is that its uh, discovery, its development had occurred at a very significant time in world history. And we can illustrate that through a question that came up, uh, well, 10 years ago now, in 2006. Question 24B of the paper was worth four marks. Uh, in one of the previous videos you saw in part A, you just had to write the equation to represent this process. But in this question, you've got to go a little bit deeper. You've got to evaluate the significance of the Haber process, um, of the discovery of uh, Haber's process at that time in world history, at that time in world history. So this was a four mark question and I've um, taken the marking guidelines from the HSC Marking Centre um, of what you would have needed to do in order to get the full four marks for this question. You'll notice that what you do have to do is you have to um, outline a social or political issue at the time. So notice this is, addresses this point here. Um, explain the restriction on supplies, so that links specifically to um, that moment in world history and why um, the development was so significant. The impact of the Haber process, so how this relates to this, and then a judgment call. So because we haven't evaluated, it's very important that you are making some sort of a judgment about the significance. So you're saying very significant uh, well, you can evaluate it any way you like, really, but you've got to make a clear statement and you need to make sure that you're supporting that. So what I've done is I've just paraphrased some information that's come out of your textbook, um, out of the uh, Chemistry 2 book, uh, the Jacaranda book by Thicket, um, in which there's a, a passage that actually talks about the significance of this process in a uh, historical context. And so we'll see if we can work through this process together and um, so make sure we can identify where all of those components are to make sure that we would produce a, a four mark response here. Now it's perfectly reasonable in a, um, a chemistry response to um, put dot points down. In fact, I encourage you to do that to start the process of um, uh, development of a question. So, what are some of the important points associated with the, uh, the Haber process? Well, um, the first point I guess that's important is that Fritz Haber was German um, and being uh, centred in Germany at that time of the First and, and indeed in the Second World War were obviously, as you'd be aware, fairly significant, um, uh, I guess, places, zones where a lot of action was occurring um, and then there was a lot of different uh, things going on at the time that were impacting on um, the German people uh, and also the, um, the British and the Allies. So we need to, I guess, identify that the, the discovery that Fritz Haber made was the development of um, the production of ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen. So you can get around that simply with the use of an equation. Okay, always write an equation to represent, uh, equation to represent the Haber process. Uh, and I've written that, uh, that equation out several times, but of course, um, just for repetitive emphasis, make sure you include the states, make sure you include an equilibrium arrow and um, all, uh, all components of that. 
Now it's probably useful to put the delta H value in as well, at least indicate that it's a negative and so the reaction is an exothermic reaction. And that helps us to contextualize some of what we're talking about. Okay, so beginning of the 20th century was when Fritz Haber started his experiments. His yields were very small. He had a high temperature um, and the use of an um, iron catalyst. Now, he did test other catalysts, including osmium, which was uh, a very good catalyst, but unfortunately it was very expensive. And uh, so both for him personally to, to be wearing those costs and even for it to go into production, you need to have a very high yields in order to justify expensive components. What he also found was that he, he gained better yields through increasing the pressure and lowering the temperature. So these were fairly important um, points and hopefully now you realize why uh, an increase in the pressure and uh, moderate temperature are the ones that are chosen. And of course they link very much to Le Chatelier's principle and exactly what's going on uh, with that. A couple of years later was when Harbour had actually successfully managed to um, synthesize around about 100 grams of ammonia. Now, that's not a huge amount, but it's certainly a starting point to, to make very clear that you are actually producing um, something of some commercial value. Now, it wasn't actually Harbour, but it was Carl Bosch, and I'm sure you'd be uh, familiar with that surname anyway, um, in terms of industrial manufacture. And it was Bosch who actually used Harbour's process in order to um, scale it up to the sorts of quantities that were going to be valuable industrially. And it was Bosch that showed that to get the best yields, and, and we're still talking 15% here, do you, you need to use around 15 to 20 uh, megapascals of pressure and around four to 500 degrees Celsius um, with the iron catalyst. But that's not the only thing that you can do. If you want the yields to increase um, and in fact, um, to increase significantly in something like um, you know, sixfold, more than sixfold, what you need to do is recycle the unreacted gases. And so that those gases are going to continue to um, be cycled back in much in the same sort of way um, as when we were talking about refluxing for esterification, that those unreacted materials continue to cycle and get more opportunity to actually react and push the reaction um, towards the product side and increase the yield. So another four years after um, that 100 grams of ammonia was produced, now 30 tonnes of ammonia were being produced every day. Now this was commercially viable and valuable. This rose to 200 tonnes per day by the end of 1914, and you may be familiar with that as being a fairly important date um, in world history. So now the production of ammonia was very large scale. Now this all took place just prior to the First World War and what Fritz Haber realized was that if we wanted to produce nitric acid, we could do that from the oxidation of ammonia. And that would then in turn be very important as a source of nitrogen fertilizer for agriculture. So this is part of the um, significance of the study. What was valuable about ammonia. Why do we need to even care about the production of ammonia? However, if we could produce ammonia in this synthetic way, what we could do is increase fertilizer um, production, and that in turn would improve crop yields. And that was important not just for the population uh, in general, but specifically for the German population who were starting to be isolated as a result of um, the impending world war. It became uh, most critical when at the beginning of the war Britain and its allies actually um, created an embargo. They blockaded the Atlantic sea routes and stopped the passage of materials coming from Chile through to Germany. As a result of that a lot of the key um, materials that were required by the Germans were not able to get through. And because um, 
nitrates in particular were so critical for both agriculture and also for their war effort, some alternative had to be found in order to replace that material that was not arriving. It was Haber's synthetic production of ammonia that allowed Germany to supply not only explosives for their war effort, but also food crops to feed the German people. Now, Fritz Haber was a patriot and he did serve in the German army during the war. In fact, he wasn't just a soldier, he was actually involved in the development of um, poisonous gases. And, um, and it was in fact the development of that uh, chemical warfare the, the, the gases chlorine and phosgene that um, almost created um, a victory for Germany. And in fact, that involvement of Fritz Haber in the development of those gases um, actually had Haber pegged by certain of the Allies as a war criminal. By the same token, others recognised that he was trying to do the best for his country. He was very patriotic and his scientific skills have certainly benefited not only Germany, but the, the whole world. In 1918, and when the war was coming to its end, Haber was awarded the Nobel Prize uh, in Chemistry. It was not presented until um, another year or two later on, but the process of ammonia production and the contribution that it made not only to uh, uh, some of the, uh, I guess, more negative impacts, such as uh, the use of explosives, but particularly because of its ability to be synthesized into important fertilizers to help feed um, the growing human population was one of the main reasons why um, Harbour received his Nobel Prize. And also, um, in several years later on, Bosch himself was awarded a Nobel Prize for um, inventing and developing high pressure technology to enable commercial production. So this one process actually led directly or indirectly to two Nobel Prizes. Of course, uh, we, we also know that to getting towards the Second World War was when there was a lot of expulsion of Jews from Germany, at least those who didn't, who saw, I guess, the writing on the wall, tried to get out as quickly as possible. And Haber, along with uh, people like Albert Einstein, were forced out of Germany and um, fleeing, uh, fleeing to the United States. And that um, is where he remained. The I guess the important thing that we want to try and make sure that we take away from this is the fact that the harbour process is an extremely important industrial process, so it is very significant. And when you're making a judgment call about this, that is something that you must include. It's a very important, very significant process, um, the harbour process. Around about 85% of the ammonia that's produced around the world is used to manufacture fertilisers for farming. So it's linking directly to food. And that is one of our most basic requirements. I guess uh, you can make an even more bold statement to conclude your report or response by saying that without synthetic fertilisers, the world could not produce sufficient food to sustain its growing population. Now, that's a lot of material. If you wanted to try and condense that down, um, into being a full mark question that would that would hit exactly what you wanted in order to get the full marks for this. You could identify the importance at the, end, at the beginning of the 20th century for some way of producing fertilizers synthetically for um, the growing of crops. The um, instability, particularly in Germany around the uh, blockades, um, and the fact that some of the materials that were being required by Germany were not um, getting to them, and also because of their entry into the war, that they also needed a source of um, material for developing weapons and explosives. Harbour's discovery of uh, the harbour process and the production of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen met these needs. They also contributed to the effort of Germany in both sustaining its people through the First World War as the processes were developing, and particularly um, again later, as um, at the time of that First World War, that embargo that was created by the, the Allied blockade ensured that there was not going to be sufficient material getting through to Germany, and it still, through this process, allowed Germany to continue to operate, to feed its people, and to produce the materials that it needed for its explosives. And 
as a tidying up comment, Harbour's discovery has had a significant impact, um, particularly on Germany in the early 20th century, but also more broadly uh, on the world in the 21st. Thanks for watching.